All right, let's talk about Twitter. Let's talk about Elon Musk. A lot of people wondering, are you going to show us the goods, Elon? Oh, I got some goods. Are you going to show us what's in these Twitter files? There, people are calling them the Twitter files, and I love this as a name for the, the Twitter files. It's like Watergate. What are in these files? Like, How is the White House, how is the, the government colluding with social media companies to keep things censored, blocked, so that we didn't know about it? Well, we're going to tell you what Twitter already has done, um, because there's some really interesting moves that have not had a lot of press because... Uh, you know, certain liberal celebrities are like boo-hooing into their kombucha about Elon Musk being at the helm of Twitter. Meanwhile, we're going to show you. Um, he says now that he will publish internal documents from Twitter explaining the company's free speech, free speech suppression policies. That's not easy to say. Here's the tweet. He says the Twitter files on free speech suppression soon to be published on Twitter itself. The public public deserves to know what really happened. Yes. Go on. Uh, one user then pointed out the most glaring censorship episode in recent memory. Um, ALX user says, raise your hand if you think Elon Musk should make public all internal discussions about the decisions to censor the New York Post story on Hunter Biden's laptop just before the 2020 election in the interest of transparency. And Musk says, yeah, this is necessary to restore public trust. He agrees. Mm. Okay. We absolutely want to see that. Um, but also raise your hand if you are interested in censorship around the pandemic. Everybody yes. here? Yes. Yes. I raise okay. your hand. I like to see Well, that. the same user above that we just mentioned, ALX, points this out, that Twitter has changed its policy about COVID. In fact, he's right. This is a live link from transparency.twitter.com. It says that effective November 20, 23rd, 2022, Twitter is no longer enforcing the COVID-19 misleading information policy. Did you know that? What? Did you know that, David? Wow. I did not, but that's awesome. I mean, I've noticed that a lot more things have been posted. Um, there's still some doctors that aren't back, but there's a lot more being posted on both sides. So yes. I'm, I'm in for it. Like I've been loving Twitter lately. Okay. Now this is interesting because on the same site that has this new update to Twitter policy, it shows how many Twitter accounts have been suspended since the pandemic began. Take a look at this chart. Now it's interesting. It's kind of starts slow in 2020 when we were in the heart of lockdowns and pandemic 2021, it gets ramped up. Why so much more in 2022 when life is opening up? Um, I'm very curious about this. This is around, like, if we think back to our experience of when this is happening and it really ramped up over the summer. Interesting. It I also really feel like it's. I was just going to say, I really feel like it's because that's when the narrative really started to fall apart. Like they were no longer able to push the same things they were earlier. Yes. So, you know, like it, it was a lot easier to tell about them, transmissibility. Hey, those idiots and yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, the same goes for also around that time we started to have some data about adverse reactions. So people were like saying, wait a second, we need to look into this. And those accounts were getting blocked and, 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 and banned because like people when were starting did the to share documents come out. Um, uh, it was early the uh, spring. I think it was in the spring, right? Um, so it might have been right around April. I think I think it was yeah. early. I think it was around April or May. I think if I'm not mistaken, right? The Pfizer documents. There's been multiple dumpings of Pfizer documents. So it depends on which one we're talking about. I was just kind of seeing if that correlated with that line. Well, know. perhaps. But let's look at content removed. Um, this next chart shows us that really 2021 was when they were really taking things down. Where did this COVID, where did this chart come from? Twitter, Twitter itself? itself. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so if you look at the content that was removed, um, it's quite a bit in 2021 and has been plummeting since. And now the policy is to not uh, enforce the misleading information policy around COVID. Um, so again, what was the actual reason for all of these content removals and all of these account suspensions? Twitter has been using the you know reasoning of, oh, we're just doing what the CDC says or what the FDA authorized and that kind of thing. But now we know that while these suspensions were peaking, according to those charts, the FDA knew certain things and had already debunked certain things, and Twitter stuck to a certain narrative long before, long after those things could not be proven. So why 
um, big question. Is that what Musk is going to show us? Uh, another example of what we might see, other juicy tidbits, um, around certain Jeffrey Epstein. In fact, today, Epstein Island was trending, um, and so was... For the holidays? Epstein client list. <laughs> and most people were shocked, I say, that this was even allowed to trend because most people theorize that this has been suppressed. Um, it is now worth noting, though, that a lot of the same people who are, because now that these, this is trending, you can see a list being shared. I chose not to share it because I'm not sure exactly how to verify this. These things have not even been released publicly. Um, but it, I, I read the list, right? And it's interesting that a lot of the names on these lists are the same people who are freaking out about free speech on Twitter. Oh. Which is interesting. Interesting. So the people that are on the Epstein client list are the same people that are like, we got to get rid of this Elon Musk. We got to get the, there is a lot of overlap. I'm just going to say this again. Like we, we don't, we, we don't, we don't know the list until we know the list. We only know we got one, um, Pritzker recently. That's all we got. Right. Okay. There's more, um, but we have to wait. Um, which is interesting. Now, in fact, instead of going after COVID tweets, or protecting Epstein users, it seems that Musk is doing the opposite. Take a look at this thread. I'm sorry it's small, I'm gonna read it to you. This is from a person who specializes in information um, that is against child trafficking laws. Um, so Eliza Blue, she says, wow, the most popular hashtag used to sell certain abusive material on Twitter is completely cleaned out. She says even, it, you know, she's not gonna post the hashtag for obvious reasons, but they're gone. She says, Correction, the three biggest hashtags used by these abusers selling this material have been eliminated. Yes. She says, this is huge. To those who weren't aware yet, Twitter actually added a direct reporting uh, option for this exploitative content. While previously it was not available before, now it's easy to find. And I, she posts screenshots. Um, she highlights them, them themselves. I don't think people know that you can use a ruler for highlighting. Let's look at this next one because you see when people highlight things on a screen, it's kind of like there's a ruler function, guys, just so you know. Um, anyway. Wait, there's a ruler function on your computer? Oh, no, when you, there's a ruler function to highlight things. Oh, you know, when you want to take a screenshot and highlight something, you can use the ruler in order to that. highlight. Anyway, I'm know. just being a Virgo. Um, I'm super glad that she shared this stuff. I don't mean to take away from that. OK, um, so let's let's not focus on that. Um, but take a look at the screenshot. <laughs> let's not focus on that after I brought it up. <laughs> I can't help it. But OK, um, so the, hey, look over there. That person's overweight. But let's not focus on that person's weight, even though I brought it up. That's it's what's called a par paralipsis. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not going to say it, but I just said it. Um, OK, but take a look at this. This shows you how now if you see something that is ex exploitative, specifically of children, you can mark it directly. She says this is new. It wasn't there before. Um, and here's another follow up of what you should be marking if you see this content, because Twitter is going after this like a bird dog. And even today, Liz Wheeler, um, a conservative uh, voice on Twitter, she says, can we actually just take a moment to thank Elon Musk for ridding Twitter of this content? And, it, and uh, she's like, of all of the battles he's fighting, this is the most important. And he says this will forever be our top priority. So, so you would think that all those celebrities leaving Twitter would be happy about this and less concerned about like COVID misinformation. And no, there's no stories on this. So over the weekend, this story started breaking and I was seeing commentary about how, hey, all of a sudden Elon Musk is removing all sorts of uh, uh, child exploitation. Child exploitation. We, can't, we, we, we have to be careful how well, we say it. Say, well, I could say the P word, but I'm not going to say it. But you know what I'm talking about, right? And I was like, why are all these P accounts being removed all of a sudden? And that was happening over the weekend. They're Wait, like, how do you know that? Because I saw reports of this happening. Reports of it. Right. Reports. Yes, I saw reports of it. Okay. <laughs> I saw reports of it. But I, I, and I was like, wow, wait a second, what's going on? I mean, I don't follow these accounts. So I wasn't like, hey, my favorite accounts are suddenly <laughs> disappearing. I, <laughs> I suddenly, wow, where's the, all my, when I'm on Twitter, you frequent. this is where I hang out and they're <laughs> all my, my favorite. is so empty now. <laughs> I have no information <laughs> yeah, here. They're all like, gone. Did they shut down Twitter? <laughs> yeah, is <laughs> Twitter dead? Twitter? What's going on? <laughs> why, why even use Twitter? I can't access my favorite news feeds. 
Uh, no, I saw reports of this, and um, it was. And I was like, really? Is this actually happening? So yeah. So good for Elon. Like removing these child trafficking uh, Twitter hashtags and other things that were allowed to propagate. If you just think about the hypocrisy for a moment, like this stuff under these liberal leaders and these people that were running Twitter, that they allowed this stuff to propagate. But oh, we're gonna block and censor Hunter Biden's laptop story. Right. <clears throat> these, um, excuse me, if you're just tuning in, I'm getting over a cold. So these <clears throat> celebrities who are really worried about saying things about COVID are not uh, actually saying, well, actually, this is the content we should be concerned about, not necessarily COVID. Um, I love this reply that I saw on Twitter. One user shared about Elon coming in with all this big reveal. So that's the mood. Uh, this was just one reply. Twitter free speech. If you can't, if you're listening, because uh, I got an, an email from a viewer that said, "Hey, remember, a lot of us listen to your show while we're driving trucks, oh, driving taxis." Sorry. Uh, I got a London taxi driver that wrote me and said, "Hey, when you guys do stuff where I can't read it, I don't want to get in a car accident." So what this it shows Elon pull, pulling up a lawn chair like at a kid's like soccer game, and he plops the lawn chair down, and it says, "Like, hey guys, I'm here to party." And it's got a box that says Twitter free speech suppression data, which is like a box full of stuff. Yes. But he's like, hey, I'm here to show this off. All right. So that's the well, vibe. I love that he's exposing he's exposing the people, too, that are doing this. And he's like, I'm going to expose the advertisers. He's like going after Apple right now, yeah. uh, which is a major player. And and I'm I, I like, seriously, I've been sitting back and just watching and, and just like it's finally time. And, and and the thing is, it's it's it is a billionaire that is the only one that could get away with this. Like we could not. We would the, like Parler tried. Parler would have been blocked. They would already been taken down. Yeah. But Elon has the money and the power to be the only one that can take on the other elites and most likely get away with it. This is why they were so scared. This is why they were so scared not of him. Were, are. Are. Are scared, were scared. They knew that he was going to do this. They're like, oh, and they call him, they paint him like, he's a loose, he's a loose gun. He's a loose cannon. By the way, he tweeted last night how he sleeps every night. He sleeps with two guns by his bedside and a picture of George Washington. That's how he, on his bedside table, two loaded guns that he sleeps with. And a lot of cans of soda with no coasters. That really bothered me. You're too. more upset about the wood. Like the, the, I think it was a cement, but still oh, yeah. there were a lot of rings, drink rings. And Do you have no, you have no, well, you know, no what's, you know what's funny? Wood? The hypocrisy is like, if you go back and look at the people who are uh, against him now, they were just praising Tesla and praising Elon and oh my gosh, he's doing such good things for humanity, like uh, Alyssa Milano and all this. And now they're just like vehemently against him because he's, he's making changes, changes that you would think they would actually be supportive of. Yeah, right. I'm all for this child exploitation thing. Just so you know, I think that's the thing to use my voice to say. I don't have a voice, but you know what I mean. My my platform, right. rather than get freaked out about whether or not someone wants to like talk about vitamin D as a curative. One of the big well, angles. Also, of the, a lot of things. Sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say really quick. A lot of people also don't realize that he's making us now the customer. <clears throat> And not the product like all these other social media that, that's absolutely free that where we're the product to corporations that are running ads. He's now making us a customer and going to give us features and doesn't really care as much about the ad revenue as, as us being the product. Yeah, and one and well, one a angle, one big part of the story that I'm excited about is the fact that these he talks about that the amount of pro psyops or psychological warfare operations that are being conducted by like you know the the media and the, and governments um, oh, on yeah. Twitter is ridiculous. So he tweeted this. He said the amount of pro psyops on Twitter is ridiculous. <laughs> he said at least with the new verified, they pay eight dollars for the privilege of psyops. It's crazy. <laughs> and so, yeah, I mean, think about that. Like, they're running psychological operations, like pushing out bot armies, pushing out verified, they're doing all sorts of crazy stuff. And, and, he, and they're aware of it now. They're aware of it. They know that they're paying for it. So they're paying for, like, verified accounts to, in order to run these psychological warfare operations on people. Um, Is well, it crazy? your tax dollars will. A lot of them are run by governments. Well... All right. So there you go. So U.S. tax dollars going to use. Uh, that's what we should be investigated. I would love to know in these Twitter files, like what government organizations are actually running psychological warfare operations on people? Like which well, ones? We know we, we, we did. Um, we covered an investigation here recently about the uh, U.S. Department of Defense running them on Iran. 
um, Afghanistan, yeah, yeah. Yemen. We, we know that already. And against the American people. Using Twitter right. and Facebook. Yeah. So the White House was asked about this yesterday. And I think that this is really telling. So watch how this reporter phrases the question to Jean-Pierre about Twitter uh, and the concerns over Elon Musk. Like, you can tell this reporter is equally as concerned, a mouthpiece of this, uh, this intelligence state watch. This is a critical moment, really, in terms of um, ensuring that Twitter does not become a vector for misinformation. I mean, are you concerned about the, you know, Elon Musk says there's more and more uh, subscribers coming online. Are you concerned about that? And what tools do you have? Who is it at the White House that is really keeping track of this? So look, this is something that we're certainly uh, keeping an eye on. And uh, look, um, we, you know, we have always been very clear um, and that uh, when it comes to social media platforms, it is their responsibility uh, to make sure that um, when it comes to misinformation, when we when we comes to the hate that we're seeing, uh, that they they take action, that they continue uh, to take action. Again, we're all keeping a close eye on this. We're all uh, uh, monitoring uh, what's what's currently uh, occurring, and uh, we see you know we see it with our own eyes of, of what you all are reporting and just. For, for ourselves, what's happening on, on Twitter. Uh, but again, social media companies have a responsibility to prevent their platforms uh, from being used by any user uh, to incite violence, especially violence uh, directed at individual communities, as we have been seeing. And the president has been very clear on calling uh, that out. He'll continue to do that. Uh, and we're going to continue to monitor the situation. Go ahead. Phil. And continue to monitor the situation. We are all watching. She is it, like, she's, she said, she is like the Gordon Ramsay of word salad. <laughs> like, I don't think I've ever heard her just give a straight. This is the answer. Boom, done. It's yeah. like, I, I, I never. I never she always says we are job. clear. We've been. Uh, she's like, we've been. Oh, we've been very clear. We've been very. She loves that phrase. Right. We've been very clear. Yeah. We've been very clear. But I'm never clear. So we're all watching this internally. We're all, so all of us at the White House right now, instead of, you know, concerns about inflation or, you know, diesel prices or uh, food prices or the collapsing housing market or any of those things, what we're really concerned about and we're watching very closely is misinformation being shared on Twitter. But it was okay when we were perpetrators of misinformation on Twitter. We were fine with that. We were fine with that. But now that people actually have a voice, we're very concerned about this. We're watching it very closely. Let me be clear. Let me be clear.